So that said, that said, I welcome Tim Duddy from the Corona Cold Action Group. Well, just to uh, clarify my position, I hope so. um, six years ago, my mother, who's a uh, trustee of a local tin hall in the country, received a call for the Department of Mineral Resources suggesting that they were going to give coal exploration licences over the Liverpool Plains. From that day forward, I have given my entire life and every part of it, and I have been to every community, I've spoken to every scientific panel, every inquiry that has been in this process since this. So I know what you people are suffering. I know what you're going through. Did you make those funny? To clarify about what I said about drilling, it was put to me, did I think in a context of drilling holes that it was ever safe to drill holes? We come from a probably the most fertile irrigation area in the country and my answer was yes, it is safe to drill holes when they are properly constructed. That does not refer to gas holes, it refers to irrigation holes. And as a farmer, I am not about to stand here before you and suggest that we should never drill holes into our aquifers for the water that is under our land to grow the food that we grow to feed you. And to be taken out of context like that, I find extremely unfair. But that aside, let's move on. The above ground issues, I'm not quite sure how that was actually um, taken out of context. And um, no doubt Alan's much more aware of what I've said, so perhaps he should tell you about it. Um, Shenhua, um, this week, have lodged, the Chinese miners, have lodged a, a potential development application for an area of the Liverpool Plains. What it identifies is that the risk to the ground, the surface, the river water, are all a high risk of contamination, destruction, and um, loss of viability for the agricultural area. To consider that these projects could even be in the public sphere up for discussion after all the discussions that have happened with regard to the protection of prime agricultural land is extraordinary. That has been uh, gone to the state planning department and they are trying to move ahead of the changing legislation to ensure that they can further their mining aspirations um, ahead of those processes. Whether the state government actually allows them to do that or not, I will be very curious to see. Make no mistake, landholders in this country are under siege. It's not since the time of war that we've seen gatherings like this discuss discussing issues that are dear to everyone's heart. Six years down the track, I can tell you, it doesn't get any easier. You have to remain strong. You have to not attack each other internally. You have to have a common enemy. And that common enemy is outside your fence. It's not inside your community. And you need to be united, go ahead, and be sure that you all support each other in this process. Because as the people in Queensland said, when you're up at three o'clock in the morning reading documents that you've got to give evidence on the next day, things that none of us have ever done before in our lives or ever dreamed that we would, it's not easy. You get attacked by all sorts of people. People in the community attack you because they might have the local fish and chip shop that thinks that they're gonna make millions out of the miners. You might get attacked at a local government level because the local government has aspirations to do certain things. 
It's not easy. But what we are facing here now is the greatest opportunity to protect regional Australia for all time. And the only way we'll do that is together. And I'm very encouraged by seeing you all here today. And be strong, have faith, and remember, voice in numbers is what makes the difference. So get those petitions signed, get them to Parliament, and make sure you've got your 10,000 signatures that will enable you to get a discussion on the floor of the Parliament. Thank you very much.